this YouTube video that I'm doing is called How to Garage Sale, and it probably seems fairly obvious to everybody, but um, there's just some tips and tricks that I wanted to mention uh, before you do this. Now, when you garage sale, it used to be in the old days that you could just go to your newspaper, highlight the ones you want to go to, and just plan your strategy. But these days, with social media, you have to look everywhere to find where garage sales are because they're not often advertised in the same manner. So before I go, I look at, I have an online subscription to my newspaper and one for a downriver section, which is near, near our home. So I look at the newspapers first. I write down all those things. I also check social media. There's several Facebook groups that I'm on and I check Craigslist. So that's what I do to plan my strategy and I do this every week before I go. Now I know in my area there's citywide sales. I love citywide sales because there is a ton of them and the chances of getting some really good stuff is pretty high because everybody can't be everywhere. So often these citywide sales are not necessarily advertised traditionally. So if you know of them and you know they're coming, typically they'll do them the second week of May or they'll do it um, the third week of April. You need to check on those things and a lot of times what I have to do is go to their um, governmental, local governmental website and find it there and I've even called there to find out because sometimes I couldn't find any anything on it. Like for instance, um, I typically go to the Trenton Citywide, Riverview, these are all in Michigan, Flat Rock, Carleton, Gibraltar, and Woodhaven, and there's many more. But there are times that I could not find the dates anywhere, especially with the COVID restrictions. Uh, the dates have kind of changed. Their normal time of having them were different. So that's the first thing you have to do. So it takes a little research. You gotta spend time doing this. But the citywide sales are definitely worth your time. That's where I get the most stuff and I get the most unusual and the, the best expensive stuff is during the citywide sale. Now, when you go garage sailing, cash is king. Don't bring a credit card. Nobody is gonna take any of that stuff. You have to bring cash and you need to bring small bills. Oftentimes people will have an impromptu garage sale, especially during the citywide sales, and they don't have any change. I often will get $200 in ones just to have enough change so that uh, I can always pay the right amount that is due. So that's really important to do that ahead of time. Go to your bank, get your change. And for me, I bring a fairly good amount of money because I'm buying for my antique booth. So that's different than just buying for yourself. If I was buying for myself, I wouldn't be um, bringing so much, but this is my inventory for the winter. I live in Michigan. There's no garage sales or very few estate sales in the winter. There is some auctions and some resale shops, but they're not as good as these garage sales, especially when you have these large citywide sales. Now be prepared, make sure you're comfortable and got good tennis shoes because you're not just gonna get out of the car five times during a citywide sale. You're gonna get out hundreds of times. And you need to move fast because by a certain time of day, there is no more good stuff left. So, so the question becomes, when you go garage sailing, how early do you go? Oftentimes, the garage sales are advertised at nine o'clock. Sometimes they open at eight. Sometimes they open exactly nine. Um, you'd never know. Um, Oftentimes I've gone at nine o'clock when they open and everything good has already walked out of the building. So I typically don't go that much earlier because I don't want to be rude when they're still setting up for their garage sales. So um, it's important to go early, but maybe 15 minutes or so is not a big deal. Maybe even a half hour. Um, the citywide sales, you could typically go up to an hour early because there are folks that are open an hour before the sale starts. So that's okay because you're driving around and whoever is open you hit. And if they're not open, you just let them go till nine. But um, it, is a, it is a dilemma <laughs> to know what time to go because uh, you don't want to be rude, but yet you want to get first dibs on what they have at that garage sale. Because typically the people that are doing dealing like me and buying for antique malls and eBay and whatnot, we're all there quite early. The beauty of the citywide sales is it's so scattered and there's so many of them that we all have a chance to get a few good things. So that's what I think about that. 
So get ready, get your tennis shoes on, get your strategy planned out, and let's go garage selling. Be prepared to walk a lot and to get out of your car lots of times. The items that I have bought that I'm gonna be showing you, I could not tell you where I got them. I have been to so many garage sales, literally hundreds. So I can't tell you which citywide or which local one or whatnot because it all got piled up and it needs to be processed. And um, so let's take a look and see all the things I did get. So for the citywide sales, a lot of times the cities will offer maps of the area if you're not familiar. Another thing is it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to go to the fanciest neighborhoods to get the best stuff. There is lots of things in trailer park sa sales and in condominium sales and all those types of things. Here we are shopping and I found a couple of lead statues. Always a good seller. Dollar each, no brainer. Gotta get those. And here's some Disney ornaments that I actually passed on. I'm not that familiar with Disney collectibles. I did get that eagle there. And here's some nice copper that I passed on. And I did get this croquet set coming up and actually already sold it. Paid five, sold it for $37. That was a good deal. I was looking for small furniture, but this set of drawers was a little too rickety for me. So I passed on that. And uh, looked through the purses and the clothes, of course, while I was there, because you never know what cool stuff you're gonna find. And this table here I almost bought also, but it had a laminate top and I thought it'd be too difficult to paint if I wanted to paint that. So that was only $2, but I passed on it because of that. The other furniture um, was I think five a piece, but it wasn't exactly the style I was looking for. So I passed on that. This sale had a lot of these collectibles. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. I, they were a pretty good deal, but you had to buy them all. So I passed on those. And they also had little plates that were collectible and whatnot, but I passed on those. Plates don't always sell so good for me. This big pile of jewelry right here was $3, which was a good buy, but plastic beads just don't sell. So I passed on those. Although that gold necklace was quite nice and these earrings were quite beautiful. Now the rings to the side, I ended up buying quite a few of those. She uh, went down to $3 a piece if I bought 10 of them. So I bought $30 worth of those rings. They were beautiful. And I can usually get at least $10 a piece for those at the antique mall. So I definitely picked up on some of those things. And here's some more jewelry bags that I was looking through, 10 cents a bag. You can't go wrong. Some of it was higher, but I did buy quite a bit of stuff there. So does it work okay? Yeah, well last time I had it plugged in, but I didn't have it plugged in for a couple years. Oh, all this jewelry for a buck, huh? Yeah. Oh Lord, you're gonna make me spend money here. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make me. I want that lamp, and I want this jewelry. It was a crock, but it was a new one. But for $5, I definitely picked up on that. That's $20 all day, so I picked up on that. That was a nice little piece. That was nice. And here was a beautiful table set with porcelain top, $20, what a buy. I was debating on this one, but it's kind of big for my booth, so I did end up passing on this one, although great buy. And this cedar chest I got for a dollar. There was a sale, that they had Amazon things at for a dollar. Everything in the sale was a dollar, including the furniture. I ended up buying so much furniture. These people were so nice. They delivered it to my house about 11.30 that night. So there's a couple of the pieces I got for a dollar each. Can't beat that, that was great. Great buy, nice people too. So we have been garage sailing this spring to several citywide sales and some in our area. And this is just some of the stuff we got. I primarily buy a lot of my stuff for the antique mall at garage sales. So um, I buy a mixture of new decorative things and older things. So I'm just gonna go through each table and tell you what I paid for things and tell you what I'm gonna ask for certain things. Um, so these needlepoint pictures were quite old, probably from the 70s. I paid 50 cents a piece. I'm gonna put five and eight dollars on them. Usually when you buy things for an antique mall, you have to figure you have to at least triple your money, which sounds like a lot, but it really isn't because you have to figure one third is for your rent at the antique mall, one third is for the item, and then one third profit. 
If you can do more than that, great. So when I look at an item, if I can't at least triple the price, unless it's a higher price item, then I think of things a little differently. Like if it's a $20 item and I know I could make 30 or 40, I'm gonna go with that. But with the smalls, you have to at least triple to make it worth your time. Okay, and here is a popcorn sign I paid $3 for. I think I'm gonna put eight, eight or nine on that one. And this I have to do a little research on. This is very old print. And I'm not sure what it's worth. Um, I believe I paid 50 cents for it, but I need to take a look and see what that is. If you know what that is, then make sure you mention it in the comments. That will help me out a lot. Because I am certainly not an expert in every area. Um, I got a newer perfume bottle and a newer tray for 50 cents and a dollar. Um, this old little Santa Claus I got for a dollar. He's very cute. I usually put four or five dollars on something like that. When you price things, you don't want to overprice either. If you're overpriced, you're not going to sell your items. So when, as I'm pricing things, I always tell myself, think cheap. <laughs> think what you would pay when you go in an antique mall. Sometimes people price things so high that they're creating their own museum. I'm not creating a museum. I want to make money because I need it for my bills. So okay, here's a stained glass lamp I paid $3 for. I think I'm going to put 20 on that. This is a nice piece of depression glass. It's called Caprice, I believe. I paid a dollar. I'm going to put 13 on that. This is a nice old floral picture. I paid 50 cents for three dollars and a Fenton shoe. I believe it's Fenton. It might be another brand. Here's some newer things I got. These owls and this frog. And this is an older. It looks like a half of a salt and pepper shaker. This item here was interesting. Um, it's got Eskimos on there, and it's. Uh, some kind of a stone, I don't know yet, but this is just a warning when you garage sale, you know, you're moving really fast. You want to get to items and get on to the next one, especially when you're doing the citywide sales. But I try really hard to look for chips and cracks, but you know, it always happens now and again. So this has got a very big break in it that was glued. Um, I only paid a dollar. I can get my money back out of that. I'm not that worried. Um, but. I do want to put in my tag that there is a break in there because I don't want to do that to somebody else. I don't want to pass off my mistake to someone else with them not knowing it. Okay, these I got for, these are both pieces of Fenton and I paid $3 each for these. That was a good buy. Typically I put between $10 and $20 on those depending on the pattern. Um, nice carnival dish I got for $2. I'm going to put about uh, 13 on that. That tag is not sticking very good. I'll have to fix that. And this is just a more of a modern mirror I got for a couple dollars. I mix in the modern with the antique stuff. It does sell well. It sells just as well. Um, you have to check with your mall or your uh, antique place um, rules. There's some places that will not allow you to do that, but the two malls that I'm in right now will allow you to put newer stuff in which I like because you can't always find the really good old stuff anymore. It's getting harder to find. So it's nice to put a variety in. Um, this is a nice old vase I got for two. Um, I buy these sometimes just because it makes the booth look pretty. I paid a dollar, I'll put like three bucks on that just to make it look nice, to make the booth look nice. Here's a nice piece of Fenton I bought for, I believe two. This set I just got, beautiful. This is a newer set, but it's Imperial Lennox. And I believe I paid 20. I, I sometimes pay more than a dollar, believe it or not. Um, when I find something really good, I'm not sure the value of it. I'm thinking it's around 80 to 100, but I'm not totally sure yet. But I thought that was a beautiful set. Now this I bought, I have a cousin, and I call her Cheryl Dean and she is the Hallmark queen of the world. <laughs> I always call her. <laughs> so of course I have to buy Hallmarks too, just because they do sell really good. So she's gonna be on a featured uh, uh, YouTube in the future here, so um, talking about Hallmark ornaments. But I got all these Hallmark ornaments for a buck. That was a no-brainer. I'm sure we can find out the value through her when she comes onto the show. Um, I got a nice Raggedy Ann music box. Always check your music boxes. Um, you don't want to overwind them. Don't check them unless you're really serious on buying it. I think I paid 50 cents on this and 50 cents on this little planter. 
It's a little jadeite box. It's, it's a plastic one. I think I paid a quarter. This little cabin, I think I paid a couple bucks for. This little doll is cute. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not a doll collector. So if you have any information out there, I paid a whole 25 cents on these little dolls. Please mention it in the comments. That will help me out a lot. I'm sure she's worth more than a quarter. <laughs> I got all these Raggedy Ann's for 10. They need to be washed. I try to wash everything if I can. I always say sink or swim. I don't want to sell dirty things. So, so sometimes you can't wash it because it has beading or whatnot on it and, and the fabrics will die. But if it can be washed, I'm going to try, especially with the Vera Bradley purses that I get. I like to wash them. Now, I did ruin one just yesterday. But sink or swim, I'm not going to sell dirty stuff. So that's my rule. So, OK, here's some old purses that I got. This is a beaded one. I think I paid a dollar for this. This one I paid more. I love these tapestry purses. I paid six for this one. Annie's in the background patrolling the area. <laughs> and then I got all these. These two I think I got for a dollar each. This one I paid more for. Um, typically, I don't pay more for it unless it's really ornate. But um, my son's getting married, and I needed a gold purse, and this was pretty nice, so I paid five for that. This is another item that kind of baffled me. I know this is the panel, paneled grape pattern, but I've never seen it in a jadeite green. So if anybody has any information on that, please mention it, because I need to research this. I have no idea what it's worth. I paid $3 for it. Anything jadeite you're going to buy if it's a reasonable price, even if it's new. It's very collectible and people love to buy that. And I got a couple little lead statues there for a dollar each. They are signed. I got to look up those too. And then uh, I did get a, a jewelry display item for a dollar. I can always use that in the booth and a chicken for two, and a willow figurine for two, and a lantern, I think, for about the same. These always sell good. They're quite collectibles. Oh, and I got a nightlight for a dollar. That's quite old. And a wooden elephant for 50 cents. So that was my finds on this table. There's still a lot more I'm going to go through. So this is the start of it. Let's move on to the next table. So here's other items that we've gotten this spring. And it's not all of them. We really did well this spring. Um, but uh, my car was loaded to the ceiling several times, especially after these citywide sales. So we got some teacups, we got some depression glass there, and a whole pile of old hats. I think I only spent $2 on each hat. That was a great buy. That was a no-brainer and a nice cast iron ship that I have to research on. I don't know much about him. And here's another table full of stuff that we got. We got more of the uh, newer primitive looking items and some more Fenton, some elephant figurines, and a big pile of Vera Bradleys and an old ideal doll that I thought was quite nice. And even a Christmas item that I'll save until that season. Here's some of the bigger items we got. We got a nice Shirley Temple doll from 1973. A beautiful picture, not as old as you would think, probably from the 80s, and some nice blow molds for holidays. Those always go really well. I always pick those up when I see them. And here's some of the small furniture that we have. Uh, most of these items were between a dollar and five dollars, so that was a really great buy. And some of the furniture we've actually already sold. <laughs> That's my helper, Annie. So now I'm going to show you all the jewelry I got at a lot of these citywide sales in the spring that I've gone to. And I cannot remember which sale I got, what things at, but I do always remember the price, which is kind of interesting. So. Here's a couple little odd items that I paid like a dollar for. But this was the thing I wanted to focus on. I was at a sale and looked at all these old vintage Christmas earrings. There's a few other things too. I don't even know if they were ever used. There's their original price on some of them. So she wanted a quarter a piece on those. Of course I wanted them all because I thought they were way cool put a few out for you folks to see. Um, I ended up spending six dollars on all of them. There's some pins in here. Very nice old Christmas. I don't think I've ever seen so much old Christmas in one place. But she gave me a really good deal on these. So that was super fun. 
So there's some of the things I got in that Christmas lot for only $6. So this is some of the jewelry that I've gotten in the garage sales I've been to in the last month. And honestly, I have not gone through a lot of this, so I really don't know what all I got. I bought several big bag lots and a lot of pieces individually. Um, I would say most of it's costume. Um, you never know, let's see what we find. And this lot here, I paid $10 for the, mainly because there was a box of rings and I brought my loop out here to check. So a lot of it was just costume and this box of rings looked very interesting to me. So let's take a look. Not too close. So it looks like a bunch of costume rings. Which costume rings are great. I like buying costume rings because I make good money on those. Oh, here's an old class ring. Let's take a look what this is. Oh my goodness. It was a good day. That's 14 karat gold. Now, if I went garage selling and looking for gold, I wouldn't have found it in a million years. But a lot of times you find it when you buy these bag lot. That was a good $10 lot. We got our kitty friends and our dog out here. And the rest I think could be sterling, but we'll have to process it. Um, most of it's costume. Like I said, there's some earrings I bought and a bracelet, and I certainly did not know that was in there. For me, um, buying jewelry, especially bag lots, is like buying a lottery ticket. You take a chance when it's cheap enough, and sometimes you find something wonderful in there, which we found in that one, and sometimes you find nothing. More than likely you find nothing, but you usually have enough stuff in that bag lot to make your money back and to sell the costume jewelry, because that's primarily what I'm looking for. But it's a huge bonus when you find gold. So that is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about that. And let's just take a look at the other stuff, the costume stuff that was in this bag. There's lots of little earrings in here. Two, three dollar earrings I could make on that. But there was a few things on the top I thought looked kind of interesting. I didn't really look at it real good. I know there's a lot of little earrings in there. This is uh, rose quartz, I believe. That was that's worth more than a dollar in itself. This is peridot. So natural stones. And this this might be jade. But if I'm wrong, correct me please, because I am definitely not the full expert on everything. I'm just telling you what I know. So uh, message me or make a comment if you think it's if you think it's wrong because we cannot know everything. So it looks like the rest of it's just costume stuff. Like I said, I pulled those few things out just to check for now, but what a lot of fun. So just like a lottery ticket, you never know if you're gonna win or lose. But I figured you couldn't lose too bad because I saw the rose quartz and the peridot on the top. So those are all the finds that I got this spring. It was a very good spring. I think with COVID, everybody has been cooped up a long time and had a lot of good things to sell. So make sure you like us, share us, and subscribe if you want to see more of this. This is a lot of fun. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye.